Hey, welcome back. So today we're going to talk a little bit about C++ variables. So far, we have worked with constant values, such as the ones we've used before. I don't know. It was like 2006. Well, why do I keep writing 15 is beyond me. 2016 for a year or, I don't know, some number for a month, or you had a string hello, hello world or whatever. Well, now I would like to introduce variables. So variable is just a name of a location in the memory or RAM, R-A-M. So RAM. This is a location within memory. This this RAM, this is like those plates that you put into your computer. Uh, I don't know, like four gigs, plates, six, uh, sorry, four, eight, 16, etc. So you can have, I don't know, most people, I think, have around in between 8 and 16 gigs of RAM, something like that. I'm pretty sure that you know what I'm talking about. If In case you don't, just open up Google and type in what is RAM or something like that. I don't know. Use your favorite search engine. Anyway, using variables, we will directly access memory locations. So variables can be of different type, and this type must be defined whenever we declare a variable. Without this, we won't be able to actually use them. Well, in most cases. There are some border cases where this perhaps is not true, but that doesn't matter for the time being. The syntax for declaring variables is as follows. So you first basically state the type of the variable. So you type in some sort of a type, and then you give the variable name. So, I don't know, var name. And that's it. You can even assign the, you can even assign it a value here, but we're gonna get into that. Anyway, so type represents the type of the variable, and variable name is basically just the name of the variable. There are rules for naming variables. Name uh, consists of letters of English alphabet A to Z. Uh, lowercase letters, A to Z, ap capital case letters, digits 0 uh, to 9, and underscore sign. You cannot use pretty much anything else. Variable, variable names also cannot begin with a digit. Only letters and underlined signs are allowed to be the beginning of the beginnings of the name of the name of these variables. So here are some examples of correct and incorrect names. So, for example, if I type in like 00, zero var underline name, this would be an incorrect example of a name. But if I typed in underline var name, this would be a perfectly legit variable name. So this is not hard. You just use uh, letters in the English alphabet, uh, lowercase and uppercase, you use digits from zero to nine, and you can use an underscore sign. That's it, nothing else. Uh, but you really don't need anything else. You can name your variables rather easily. Just don't put the numbers in the first place. And that's pretty much it. It is considered to be a good practice for variable names to be self-descriptive. For example, if you... Let's go ahead and do this. Uh, let's say that you have a max and a minimal value of something. I don't know. It doesn't matter. So max, this would be a name for one variable. And then you would have min. This would be a name for another variable. But what would be bad names for this is if you typed in like, I don't know, G and then R. Because you have no idea what this means. It's a good idea, it's a good practice, it's a good practice to actually name your variables in a descriptive fashion so that they pretty much explain what sort of values do they contain. You could have named the variable temperature or degrees or something like that. But giving some random names that don't actually associate with the value of the variable, that's that makes very little sense. You'll see later on when you get like, it doesn't make it that much of a difference in a simple program like this, but uh, later on when you get into code, into, uh, into coding, and if you have a program that contains like 1 million lines of code, uh, it is a very good idea to follow standardized programming practices, otherwise you will get lost, and, or other people will get lost in your code, and you as well. 
Anyway, C++ types can be grouped into embedded. This is a part of C++ and user defined. So a user can define them. So a user can define a type as well. Embedded, embedded ones that are a part of C++ can be divided into integral, real, and pointer. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of them. Integral ones, bool, oops, bool. I will go over all of these. You have bool, you have char, you have short, in long, long, long. Actually, the variable is the variable type is long, long. You have long, and then you have long, long. Signed, unsigned, and for real, you have like floating, uh, float double and long double for pointer. Well, you can put pretty much all of the above into the pointers. Anyway, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. I shall explain these individually. I just wanted to mention them there. Now, the user defined ones, these are a bit more complicated ones, can be divided into standard, which are a part of C++ libraries. For example, you could have something like std colon colon string or std colon colon vector. I know, and those would be the ones that are defined by the user. But there are some more complicated things that a user can define that a, a user when a user can define a type, and these sort of variables, I do believe, yes, they can be found in the keylogger course. Throughout the keyloggers, we needed to, as a lot of things needed to be like custom made, so you can see them there. But anyway, forget about that for now. Just focus on the more simple stuff. I just wanted to mention them. That's it. For now, we will use embedded types. So the ones that are in C++. So these are, you have bool. Now bool, sorry, bool. Now bool can be either true or it can be false. Those are the two values that this type can have. So if I have bool, which is the type, and then the name of the variable can be test. So this can be equal to basically true or false. This can also be substituted with numbers. Zero would represent something to be false and any positive integer like one or uh, two or three or I don't know, like this number, they would all uh, evaluate the true. So it can only have two values. It can be either true or it can be false. Now, the next one that you have is called char. Char stands for characters. So I don't know, you could uh, char C. This could be equal to a character, I don't know, uh, W. Okay, yeah, so just a character W, that's it. It contains characters, basically. Unsigned char you have this one, which is an unsigned char. And the range of unsigned char is from 0 to 255. And you have signed char, whose range is from minus 128 to 127. If, if you have a prefix, if you have a, like, something that stands in front of char or in front of pretty much any other variable that says variable type that says like unsigned or signed it is usually referring to positive and positive and negative numbers so if i say for example unsigned that means that usually this type can only contain positive values and if i say signed then it can also have negative values I know that this seem uh, I know this that this seems a little bit weird that a character contains positive and negative values, but you will see when we get like when we mention the ASCII table and how the char actually works and how you can use actually numbers instead of characters, which eventually evaluate to characters. But in general, you can also have like uh, unsigned int, which is like an integer. But if it's unsigned integer, then it can only receive a positive value. Then only a positive value can be assigned to it. So unsigned int, I don't know, n for number equals. So this can only receive value. This can only be assigned values like 10 or, I don't know, 1 or 
to as long as the as long as it's a positive whole number. Just wanted to explain that with unsigned and signed. Uh, you also have a variable type called short. This is to represent very small numbers. Uh, let's go ahead and use signed and unsigned again. So un unsigned short. This basically would represent numbers in the range between 0 and uh, I have this written on my screen here, 65536. Uh, 65536. So this would represent numbers within this range. And you would have like down below, this is pseudocode that I'm writing here, on pseudocode that I'm writing here, so on unsigned, oops, sorry, signed short, which would be minus uh, 32268, ah, 68. So this would be the beginning of the range, and the end of the range would be 32267. Excellent. So this would be a type short, which has this range, and only values from this range can be assigned to type to a variable of type short, and likewise, unsigned short and signed short can only receive uh, unsigned short variable can only receive values within this range. Okay, so just to clarify something, you don't need to write unsigned and signed short. You can also just type in like short and that would be pretty much the same as me typing signed short so these two these two these two types have pretty much exactly the same meaning so no big deal there i know that it might seem a little bit boring but we need to go over the types of variables and variables themselves before we can move really anywhere probably one of the most important things in c++ when we get into more complex stuff, it's going to get a little bit more interesting. But for the time being, I just have to go over these basics. Uh, if some of you have a good amount of previous programming experience, you might find this extremely boring. But down the road come the complex stuff. I need to take into consideration that a lot of people are complete beginners. And I do need to explain like everything from A to Z so that the course would be adjusted for a broader audience. As we as we did label as we are most likely going to label this course as the beginners one as from beginner to advanced pretty much. Anyway, our next uh, variable type will be int. So you have int. It stands for integers. Uh, again, you have signed and unsigned, which you can place in front of int, which is no big deal. I showed it to you a moment ago. Then again, you have long. Now this is to represent bigger numbers. We also have both signed and unsigned. And then you have a type long, long, I don't know, uh, test, and that would be the declaration of the lo long, long type of a variable uh, type, which is, this is a variable test, which is of type long, long. Let's put it like that. This is to represent like really big numbers. I mean, really, really big numbers. Long is just to represent big numbers. And we're not going to be using these that much, really. Mostly we're going to be using like int, boolean, char, etc. And double, also float. Float, floating points. So this means that this represents real number. Uh, the precision is pretty much six decimals. So what, what is this? So float f or just float some n number equals to 0. Point, so 0. Point, I don't know 4343 4, this would be a floating point number an integer on the other hand int i don't know uh int num would be equal to like 10 so do you see the difference this one is a whole number 10 and flow 10 the floating point is zero point something. I don't know. Doesn't really matter. So that just showing you pretty much the difference. Then again, you have double. Now this presents again real numbers. The precision of a double is around thirteen to fifteen decimals. 
you also have like long double, same as for double, but with way bigger precision. Let's put it like that. So double would be basically like, let's say double D equals, so this would be a double four point, I don't know, three, three. This would be a double, this would be a value that would be assigned to a variable of type double. So you might now ask me if you have like, float, which is like F and I don't know, this is like 0 0.54 and you have int, which is I equals, I don't know, uh, 10. Why on earth would you ever use these two? Why wouldn't you just use a double and for everything? Well, the difference is in memory space. So some of these require less memory space than others. And especially if you type in like uh, unsigned int. So if you know that, the, that this integer i will never be assigned a value that is negative, you can declare it as unsigned int. And the smaller the variable range, something like that, you have the less memory, the less memory will it take. You can look it up on the net. The order of the, the the order of types, which type reserves how much memory? Because immediately when you declare it, the computer will actually reserve a portion of the memory for that particular variable. This is very good. This is a very good coding practice, and this is one of the advantages of C over some of the other programming languages, like uh, for example PHP or Python or something like that. Well, maybe not Python, but over PHP, where you don't really need to declare types of variables. Rather, instead, you just uh, declare variables. Here, you can actually declare types of variables and in such a way save up a lot of RAM, which is a very good coding practice. So uh, let's go ahead and practice these variables a little bit, declare a few and see what happens. Let's go to a short coding exercise and see how this actually works in real examples. But I'm running a little bit short on time, so we'll continue in the follow-up tutorial.